Okay, now let's take a look at the next section, which is the configuration of full mesh IBGP between R2, R3, and R4. And we need to use pure template in R2. So now we're going to interconnect the two groups of routers right here in the middle. We already have this link up and running between R3 and R4. So all we need to configure is just a link or the session between uh, R2 to R3 and R2 to R4. Okay, so let's begin our config on R2. And we're going to use a peer template for this. Since again, the config from R2 to R3 and R4 will be almost identical. So come with the template peer session. Let's call AS100 route reflector. It's going to be remote AS100 and then update source loopback zero. Okay. Just to make a quick note that might look identical to what we have configured for R1 and R5, which is the client sections. You can see peer policy, uh, actually peer session. It looks identical, so I could have actually reused that, but it's a good idea for the flexibility to keep them separated in case there's additional requirements that you, or config that you need to add for just for the session to the route reflector and not the client. So we'll keep that separate in this case. And now we just need to add neighbor to that. 0 0.3 inherit with the peer session AS100 RR. Okay, and then do a dot four as well. And that's all we need for R2 on R3. Router BGP 100, neighbor, 0 0.2, remote AS 100. And then we need the update source, the back zero. Same thing with R4, router BGP 100, neighbor, Remote AS100 and then update source, loopback zero. Okay, so it seems like we have our BGP neighbor that came up already. So we're gonna go back to R2. You can see right here, two lock messages for R3 and R4. If we now do show IP BGP, we expect to see the R6 loopback addresses right here being learned from two different paths or two different peer. As you can see, the next hops remains the same which is ultimately it's just a R6 loopback zero. If you do show IP BGP 6600, you can see, or it gives you a little bit more details. Actually one is being learned from R3 and the other one is being learned from R4. Okay, just to make a quick note also, we have a originator ID that got inserted by the route reflector as well as the, this time the cluster list. If you remember, we entered 346, and that somehow got converted into a dotted format. So we enter as an integer, but it got converted into this particular format. And somehow it comes out as 1.90. Okay, but nevertheless, this is our cluster ID that we enter. You can see that they both uh, 4 and R3 share the same cluster list. Okay, but now if you do show IP Ceph 6601, so from the perspective of R2 to reach R6 loop back 10, you can see it's actually load balance out between R3 and R4 because if you do show IP route of 172.16.06, because if you see up here, the next top of both routes are R6 loop back zero. And if you see that for R2 to get R6 loop back zero, it has received a, a two of the eagle cost path routes from R3 and R4. And that's why it's load balancing the traffic out. Again, just to reiterate, the actual routing decision is still determined based on the IGP routing table to the next hop IP of that particular route learns through BGP, not so much through the BGP topology itself. Okay, now let's jump over to R3 and show IP BGP. And clearly R3 also learns route from R2, which is the R1 and R5 loopback addresses. They do show IP BGP 5500. Here we, the R3 has also received the originator attributes versus the cluster, which is the R2 loopback zero. Okay, now moving down to R5 and see how R5 sees the routes to R6. The show IP BGP. Okay, so right there, these are the routes to R6. Again, next top never change throughout the AS. It's still loopback six, and that's why I mentioned in the beginning of the video that we need to make sure the Router loopbacks are reachable by all of the routers. 
and then let's do show IPBGP 6600. Again, this time, since the route has passed through actually two cluster, it's got two cluster ID added to the route. So the original cluster ID was the 346 that we enter for R3, R4, and then once it passed through R2, R2 actually added its own cluster ID, which is the router ID in this case, to the route as well. Okay, originator remains to be 0 0.6. All right, nevertheless, we can try to ping 0, 01, uh, 6601 sourcing from loopback 10. And you can see that it's completely pingable. All right, so what we have observed so far is we just call it rule number one of route reflector, which is the routes from a client will be advertised to both client and non-client with the cluster ID or cluster list. So if I bring up this, what that means is a route that's coming in or it's being learned from a client by a route reflector, it will be re-advertised to both the client, in this case is R1, which is the client of R2, as well as the non-client, in this case is R3 and R4. And that's how the route gets advertised throughout the network through BGP. And R2, as it re-advertises route, it also adds its cluster ID into the route as well. Okay, so that's pretty much rule number one of a route reflector. I mean, obviously, if we have the eBGP session, then I wish you would see later when we add that session right here, R2 will advertise that out to R7 as well. All right, so that completes our task number one. Okay, moving down to our task number two with the route reflector and eBGP. Here we have to configure eBGP session between R2 and R7. And then we have to advertise R7 loopback 10 through 12 to the BGP, and then make sure that R7 loopback 10 through 12 are reachable by other routers in AS100. Okay, so what we're going to do is to complete this uh, session right here between R2 and R7. So let's go to R2, router BGP 100. Just need to specify the neighbor 1627.7, remote AS 65123. Okay, so if you remember, that once R2 receives route from R7 and re-advertise it to its IBGP peers, it would not, by default, reset the next top IPs of the originator of the route, which is R7 interface IP right here. So what we need to do is to use next top route to make sure that R2 tells everybody that the next top is actually itself, which is the R2 loopback zero. Okay, so what we have to do is to come up with a, since we're using a peer template already, Actually, let's uh, kind of do a quick review of what we have so far. Just kind of refresh our memory. So we're going to configure next hop self first to the client. Since we already have a peer policy, because next hop self is an option under the peer policy and not peer session, we just gonna can go, basically go ahead and add the next hop self as part of this template right here. And that's going to be for R1 and R5. So next hop self, but for the route reflector peers, which is R3 and R4, we currently do not have any peer policy, so we have to come up with a peer policy for that. I'm going to call it the same name, AS100 underscore RR. And then next top self. And what we're going to have to do is to, for R3 and R4, is to inherit peer policy with AS100RR. Okay, same thing here with R4. That should be all we need. Now let's go over to R7. Router BGP 65123. No sync, no auto. BGP router ID 0 0.7. Neighbor 27.2. Remote AS100. Okay, I have to make sure we advertise our seven loopback 10 through 12. Let's loop back 10, loop back 11, and then loop back 12. Let's just show IP BGP. Looks like their neighbor came up. There you go. So R7 has now learned. R1, R5, and R6 loopback addresses. And then it should also advertise its loopback as well at this point. So we can hop over to, let's see. So R7, R2, we can hop over to R1. 
which is a client of R2, and you show IP BGP. You can see right here, these are our seven loopback addresses. And you just show IP BGP 7700. Just look at the detail of that. And you want to make a note right here that, as we saw earlier, the other IBGP route, we had the originator ID, so it was the cluster list. But for the EBGP route that's coming in from the outside, the route reflector, which is R2 in this case, does not really insert whether it's originator ID or cluster list to that. Okay, so that's one main difference between IBGP and EBGP routes when you when it comes to route reflector. But if you're trying to ping 7701, sourcing from loopback 10, you can see it's pingable. And also the next hop for R7 addresses, it's got reset it by R2 since we put the next hop self command in there. Okay, so we now once trying to get to that. IP address, it looks it looks it up and said the next hop is actually R2. So then it consolidated the IGP routing table to figure out how to get to RT loopback zero. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, R3. We just look at R1. So now R3, which is a route reflector itself. You yeah, show IP BGP. Okay, again, R7 routes with the next hop of R2 loopback zero. Show IP BGP 7700. Same thing, there's no originator ID or cluster list. And now finally, let's hop over to R6. Show IP BGP right there. Next hop's never changed, but R6 is learning that route from R4 and R3 with the exact same next hop. Show IP BGP 7700. As you can see now, the route has changed slightly that the R3 and R4, which is a route reflector, has inserted the originator ID and the cluster list to the route as it advertised to its client. Okay, the originator in this case, it's actually show up as R2, since R2 is the one that's uh, being a next hop, and it, it inserts its own cluster ID into the route as well, right? If you're trying to ping 7701, sourcing from loopback 10, ensure that is uh, pingable from R6. Okay, so what we've seen so far is basically rule number two of route reflector, which is, let me kind of clean this up a little bit. Um, rule number two is routes from EBGPs or being learned from EBGP session will be advertised to both client and non-client without a cluster list. Okay, so R2 in this case learning routes from R7. So R2 will advertise that to all of its client, which is R5 and R1. It also advertise that route to its non-client, which is R3 and R4, without inserting a cluster ID in the cluster list. It's actually R3 and R4 themselves that inserts the its own cluster ID before it advertises to R6. So that is three, four, six. Okay, it's actually insert the originator ID as well that belongs to R2. Okay, so that's rule number two. And that for us complete our task number two.